Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for joining me. This is a Biking Buddies Motor Vlog. We're in the man cave. We've got a couple of jobs to do. So without further ado, grab yourself a beer, grab yourself a brew, strap yourselves in, and let me take you on this Biking Buddies Motor Vlog. Cue those titles. Where do you go when you're young, when you're restless, when you're fun, cause you're desperate? Okay, so with the titles out of the way, let's explain what we're up to today. Let's get ourselves out of the man cave. Now, when you ride adventure bikes, such as I do, things invariably happen and things invariably break. And this is no exception. So what we're up to today is we're gonna replace the gear lever. And the reason behind replacing the gear lever here, you'll see in a second. So you feel the back of the bike stepping out a little bit. Oh, that's, that's good. Now, incidentally, that little silver thing that you've just seen ping across the screen when the bike lost traction and I almost dropped it is exactly this. It is the end of the gear shifter knob. Now, you'll see this one is very loose here. I did manage to affect a roadside repair, but that said, um, I did purchase a new one and we're going to replace this. So I'm going to take you through that. We're not going to throw this one away. We're going to repair it and we're going to carry this one um, as a spare on the bike because I'm fairly sure as eggs are eggs, I'll drop the bike again at some point um, and these uh, points of impact are also the ones that uh, break. So let's dive into the action. Now obviously there are a few essential pieces of kit that you need to carry out such a detailed and involved task such as changing your gear lever. No, joking aside guys, but there are a few things that you need. First and foremost is you need a bike with a damaged and wounded gear lever. Check, we've seen the video to that. We've got the man cave here. And the tools in order of assemblance that we're going to need, very important, I've laid these out so that you can see for clarity of vision. First and foremost, we need the obligatory cup of tea, goes without say. Secondly, we need a 4mm Allen cane. Then we need a whacking stick and also a centre punch, so a decent sized hammer and centre punch. We need a drill with a 4mm drill bit inside to perform the surgery. We then need an M5 tap. Now going back to the drill bit, I appreciate that technically you should have a 4.2mm drill bit, but I don't have a 42 so 4 will do. M5 tap, and then we need a new gear lever. Now what's rather frustrating with this gear lever is this is a genuine Triumph part, um, as is the one that's on the bike. Now this one, you will notice, uh, does have, if we look there, does have a spring feature that if the gear lever impacts on something or something impacts on it, it will fall backwards. Now the original one, the original one doesn't. Madness, absolute madness. So we're gonna replace it with a spring-loaded one. We're gonna fix the original and we're gonna carry that as a spare everywhere we go. Okay then, so this process is really straightforward. In here, we've got a pinch bolt. I don't know whether you can see on the GoPro, there are two dots aligned here. Let me show you on the new lever. So on the new lever where the pinch bolt goes through, these are internal splines and they'll sit on an external spline shaft and there's a little dot machined in there. Hopefully that'll remain in focus and you can see that. The idea is that you keep, it's a point of reference from the end of the uh, externally splined shaft to the internally splined lever um, just so that you can align them. Now with this one uh, that's presently on, uh, it was already bent from when I dropped the bike up in Kilda Forest. So as such, I've aligned it one notch uh, north, one notch up, which just raises this point here a little bit higher. And the idea behind that is that when I'm standing up riding, my feet are in a lot more of a horizontal plane than when you sit down riding, your feet tend to be tore down a little bit. So for gear, changing gear whilst I'm standing up, I do like this peg to be slightly higher. So that aside, let's whip this bad boy off. Uh, <laughs> and then just gently wiggle our lever and off it comes. It's as straightforward as that. Now, let's have a look at the profile of this lever. Keep that in as horizontal aspect as we can. You can see there is a factory bend here and a factory bend here, um, which also keeps this uh, at 90 degrees in the same parallel as the shaft. Now, let's have a look at the replacement and you'll see 
how much out of alignment the new uh, or the old one against the new one is so where I'm holding it here with my finger and thumb this point should be a little bit further that way um, so I will get a noticeable um, increase in performance whilst I'm uh, changing gear it'll be a lot easier to tick your toes in when you're standing up to change those gears so let's dive into the man cave um, and get cracking okay so we're good to go then folks right now first thing we're going to do is going to knock this out so that i can get the angle profiled correctly on the gear lever itself so let's just lock that into the vise got a little bit of a drift here this shouldn't take too much effort to knock out and there we are we've got that and as you can see there this is the little bit that's just swaged into the end of the gear lever so i want to get the profile correct into here and then we're going to sort the end of that out so let's put that to one side a little bit of swinging and raving now so again let's just have a recap look and let's look at the difference you see so i need the top to be along a little bit more i need more of a bend in here and a little bit more of a bend in here so i'm going to clamp the bottom section and then i'm going to pull this section towards me so let's clamp that nice and firmly in the centre of so let's have a little bit of a compare so we have the original here with its bend profile in and very quickly we now have this one here that looks considerably closer than it ever did. So let's get this end stub tidied up and then let's get some drilling done. So I'm going to put a centre punch hole right in the centre of this shaft, drill my M4, then I'll turn it around and uh, we'll clamp it the opposite way and we'll get the M5, the M5 tap in there. So let's make sure that we're absolutely centrally aligned. This does have a little cast mark on it as it is. Three, two, one, and there we go. Perfect. And I think we're good to go. Okay, so that looks really good now. So that's our tap down. Now what I've got here guys is I have got uh, an M5 stainless Allen drive uh, bolt that I'm going to use into uh, the end of here. And I've also got, um, it's actually a stainless steel roofing washer. So it has got this rubberized uh, material on the back. And the reason for that is I want a little bit of cushioning behind the thrust washer and the gear arm. So let's get our brand newly forged gear arm that we've put together. Um, so let's get that uh, in place. Looks like a nice, a nice smooth fit there. Excellent. And we'll just always turn counterclockwise just till you feel the thread drop and then you should sound of a good tap is that uh, we can put that in finger tight so there we are and we'll just wind this in as i say this washer does have a, a little bit of a rubberized uh, matting behind it so again it's in stainless into aluminium i don't need to go overly tight just a little bit of a nip and that looks good nice and solid this should be able to rotate it doesn't matter um, that it does um, as long as that the uh, bolt uh, is nice and secure which it is and there we are we have one replacement that we can carry in the back of the bike um, so that uh, if I do drop the bike anywhere um, be it remote be it a long way from home be it on the drive I have got a ready-made replacement happy days okay then so here we are back at the bike now I don't know whether you'll be able to notice the pin mark that we mentioned earlier the little dot we've also got a dot here aligned so what I do need to do is just try as much as possible to get those uh, elements aligned up that's one tooth too high drop that down a tooth now as I said earlier I do like mine to be just slightly misaligned by one tooth higher up it just raises the end of this so when I'm standing up it enables me to get my feet uh, I'll get my toes rather underneath um, there let's pop the pinch bolt back in make sure that uh, the lever is uh, right back where it needs to be because there is a groove cut into the external spline shaft 
Um, and again, as when we took this off, this doesn't need to be particularly FT. It is just a pinch bolt. Uh, the friction uh, element is carried out between the interlocking teeth, not the actual clamping action. So just a little bit of a turn. That's great. And there we are, we're done. So as you'll see from our new gear lever here, we work perfectly well. Should anything come and impact on this, be it the bike dropping and hitting the ground or rocks flicking up, uh, which is a bit of a culmination of the two, this is just going to fall back and take a little bit of the impact and hopefully it won't snap. But as we've seen, I have got a spare now that I can carry with me on the bike. Fantastic. Okay then guys, so we've got one last thing to do before we can call this job done and then just head out onto the road and that's check that our gear alignment is exactly where it needs to be. So for that we need to fire the old girl up, always a pleasure. And we're sat in neutral at the moment which is brilliant, so let's just click down into first. Yep, perfect, a little bit of engagement, up to second, yep that's all good. So that gear positioning that I was talking about while I'm sat down, it's all very workable. Let's drop back into uh, neutral. So you'll see the angle of my foot there is typically your toes are down when you sat down. Now when I'm standing up riding, you do tend to have your feet a little bit more horizontal. So again, into first, nice and simple. Clutch out. To get into second, it's a, it's a toe in flick and I find it a lot easier to do that. Um, if I have that peg just one notch up as it is, it just raises that point and there we are. So yeah, we can work our way through the gears. Very, very happy with that. So let's quieten the bike down. Uh, really pleased with that. Nice, simple job changing the gear lever anyway. Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, but never throw the old ones away, guys, if you can get away with it. Effect a repair, chuck it in the back of the tail pack, pop it in a rucksack, uh, and you've got a bit of a lifesaver there should you ever drop the bike. Again, as I said in the opening sequence, this is an adventure bike. I do take it off-road. Things will happen and things will break. So to close the video down then, guys, thank you very much for your company. I hope you found this a little bit entertaining a little bit informative never take yourself too seriously i certainly don't give the video a thumbs up give it a like give it a share don't forget to subscribe and wherever you are in the world guys whatever you're doing keep it safe keep it shiny side up and we will catch you for the next one thank you guys cheerio bye now bye bye now bye